Hello YouTube, this is Mr. Surplus, not here, bringing the second part to the review um, on my SKS sniper rifle. This is a uh, Jugo M59-66 rifle. It's a chamber in 762 by 39 which you can use to load the rifle with this um, stripper clips. This is the way it was, the rifle was designed to be loaded. Um, this rifle, I um, when I purchased it, I paid $250 for it. The bluing was 100%. It only had like minor little um, wear, I guess it was from storage. Um, around a few um, of the uh, edges of the gun but besides that the balloon was pretty, pretty in good shape I purchased it from Sanco Global here in Miami Florida where I live and the only thing I really did to the rifle was to refinish the stock um, I only used polyurethane there was no stain that I used on the rifle um, it came out this color I guess because of the type of wood that um, the stock was manufactured with so all I did was I sanded it um, and um, I gave it a few coats of um, polyurethane and that was all I did to it. Um, this rifle I decided to turn it into a, uh, a uh, sniper project. Um, I do have another M59 66 actually it's my A1 um, SKS which is like a, I have a video posted on that one and it's got like a blonde um, color stock that rifle it's in mint condition um, I don't think it has never been issued to anybody or um, it's complete uh, completely 100% um, basically new. So I decided to use this one instead for my um, sniper project. What I did with this, I want to start off on letting you guys um, see all the different um, things that I did to this gun to turn it into an SKS sniper. Um, what I did was I started off by replacing the original grenade launcher which is right here in the front. Um, with the uh, the Tapco uh, muscle brake, which is the same exact thing as the uh, original grenade launcher, just got a little bit, a few more rows of the uh, with the little openings, the little holes in it for the gas to distribute um, when the uh, bullet exits the muscle. Um, so they do sell it as a muscle brake Tapco, and it does help to keep your um, side of um, aim and to uh, get a follow-up shot really quick on target as you're aiming down range. So that was the first thing I did. I put the uh, Tapco uh, muscle brake slash grenade launcher I will call it. Uh, this looks just like it. I also put an aftermarket which I'm going to show it a little later up close. An aftermarket sight uh, post that they have them in different colors. It's, it is plastic though, but it works pretty well. Even though that with the scope that I have on it, this type of setup, um, you don't really need um, uh, to shoot open sight with this the way I have it set up. So the second thing that I did was to put a Harris bipod, a six by nine. Um, I also went ahead and installed a uh, shell deflector which is drilled and tapped and also a um, scope mount that's also drilled and tapped. I'm going to flip the rifle around so you guys can see it. Um, so these are the things that I installed which it works really good because when you shoot the rifle the casing that gets thrown out of the uh, um, action it doesn't bang the bottom part of the receiver uh, I'm sorry of the scope and um, 
and the scope mount, it's very, very um, sturdy. Obviously, I drilled and tapped it into the receiver because the type of um, scope mounts that I have for SKS is just the ones that I've seen most, for the most part, is uh, the Picatinny rail or the Weaver or the Weaver rail. It's built into the receiver cover. So a lot of time your receiver cover, even though this is the original receiver cover and there's no movement on it, but um, a lot of them, they tend to have a little, a little bit of play. So that will not help in keeping your scope zeroed and, um, and your point of impact uh, always, always on the same spot. So I decided to go ahead and drill and tap the receiver. Like I'm saying, it's my second SKS and I wanted to do this to it. Um, so these is the only two things that I drilled and tapped into the receiver was the shell, the casing ref reflector, and the uh, scope mount. Um, also by installing the Harris bipod, I can't really pull out the bayonet, even though I don't really have no need for it to, to pull it out. And also the uh, magazine, the 10 round mag fixed magazine, it only opens halfway and it doesn't really um, drop the rounds to the bottom. Those are two things that, you, that I sacrificed. Um, even though the gun's still original, I can always take the, if I just take the um, Harris uh, bipod, and decide to shoot this gun off a sandbag or any type of rest. Um, again, the, the, the feature of the bayonet being able to pull it out is back to you know functional and also the magazine. So at the range where I go shooting, they don't require me to open this thing up um, after um, they call the line. Basically, all they want you to do is just for the bolt to stay open towards the back and you guys know if you know about SKS on your last round your bolt stays open on this type of weapon um, so I also went ahead and installed a uh, recoil buffer that goes back here and okay the recoil buffer and I installed from Wolf a uh, the firing uh, spring which brings the trigger down from like I don't know, this thing might, might have up to like maybe 8, 9, 10 pounds trigger originally when the rifle was designed and it, by doing that modification to the trigger assembly you actually going to bring the trigger down probably to like maybe 3, 3.5 pounds, I haven't tested it but it's pretty light and it also works as a, if you want to as a two stage trigger. Um, like I'm saying, so basically those are the things that I did to this rifle. Um, the muscle brake, okay, which is the same exact thing as the uh, uh, the grenade launcher. Put a front co a, uh, a colored uh, front post sight. I put the Harris bipod, the uh, casing or shell deflector, the uh, scope mount and also these two items that I put on the right for our drill and tap into it. I got the, uh, the recoil buffer and also the wolf spring to um, make the trigger a lot lighter and also if I want it'll act as a, as a two-stage trigger. Um, this rifle comes with, um, it comes with this cleaning kit um, that you can um, Keep it in your butt stock in the end here it's got like this door plate that you open and it sticks in there and it comes with like a little jag for your cleaning rod and um, a little brush in there I don't usually take this thing apart because I clean my rifles with other, other better things it came with this little oiler bottle and um, obviously the two um, uh, ammo pouch which I have somewhere around there and all the stuff basically full of cosmo line like everything that's surplus and I have to just clean it clean it out and, and, and take care of that. Um, I put um, the uh, 30 millimeter uh, weaver scope mount with a uh, leapers accu shot 8x32 
by 56. I also have the scope on my um, Barnet Target Gun 308 ZZ 550. I have two of these scopes. The reason I purchased this one to also put it in this gun because I haven't had no problems with it. Um, I know a lot of people they knock down the leapers because they're they're actually like they're not, they're not a very cheap scope. Um, I'm sorry that they are cheap scopes, but um, I have never had a problem with two AccuShot scopes that I have, which I think is their top of the line scope on the leapers, the AccuShot SWAT. Um, this is an A by 32. I have never lost. It's never lost to zero. Has never shifted on me, and it's always been. Um, holding true as far as a uh, point of impact so I've just left it on there and, you know so that's what I have on it it's a 30 millimeter tube um, the by the way I want to show you guys the gun is empty there's nothing in the gun right now the bolt is back and I just want to cycle it real quick cycle it real quick just to kind of show you a little bit the trigger um, on this weapon. Right now I'm just going to pull it very slightly. They went back enough. Now you can see the trigger play on there. Now the trigger it's actually as, uh, serving as a two stage trigger. There the pull is very light. It's probably less than three pounds right there after you activate it back a little bit and then barely you just touch it and it goes off. So you can do this to your trigger assembly just by um, getting that spring kit that they sell you from Wolf. You can look it up in the internet and it will really reduce the trigger pull on this SKS rifle. I just want to show you guys the other side of the gun. Okay, this is how it's um, drilling tapped on the side here. That's how it looks on that side. Okay, and I will be showing you guys right now a uh, close up of the of the gun. Okay, second here. The muscle break there with the different openings of the holes. That's how it looks with the um, with the scope mount and the uh, shell ref reflector, Harris bipod. That's where I drilled and tapped it with two screws on each side and then the shell deflector also with two screws. It's nice and sturdy, has never tried, never gotten loose. And that's how the gun looks. Just to show you guys. From this side, okay, and that's it. That's the Jugo M59 66 sniper. You guys, have a great day.